what I'm going to start off with is a simple signal generator that is going to be uh, putting out a signal at the microvolts range. And this is useful because we can emulate a radio signal uh, from over the air with this signal generator. And here we have the Wikipedia page for the S-meter. And for those of you who don't know, an S-meter is simply a meter that tells you a relative signal strength of your received station. And these units here are called S-units. You've got numbers along the bottom. And something like an S9 would be a stronger signal than an S5. And something with S9 plus 40 would be stronger than an S9 by 4 decibels. And if we scroll down, you can find that Wikipedia has a nice chart of the microvolts, the power level, and relationship to the S meters reading, or what should be calibrated to. But in reality, and in practice, uh, most of these S meters are going to be just relative to, you know, whatever the manufacturer decides to set. And it might not be representative of this table. So, here's the plan. I'm going to start off with creating this uh, oscillator here. It's going to be coal pits. And we have a couple options of attenuating our signal. And the first one is really what I've been... Uh, doing and messing up is just making like an amplifier if we cooperate and maybe something like that for the bias, maybe a cap in there there we go and you know this gets tied to crown this gets tied to power and you get a lovely signal that <laughs> it's supposed to be greater than what it is, but in my uh, luck with building amplifiers, it's always less than what it is. Um, that's one option. <laughs> um, other options are... Get rid of all that. Just putting a simple resistor and taking an output right there. And a third option might be just putting another resistor right there connecting those together and that's going to give you a simple voltage divider. Now the only real difference between a voltage divider setup and the single resistor setup has, is essentially something to do with the output impedance of this entire unit. And since I'm going to be using my Kenwood to calibrate what's an S1 and what's an S9, um, I don't really think this matters. So I'm going to toss this out the window and just go with a, a single resistor like that, maybe make it variable, or make it selectable, so I can have jumpers, and maybe have a jumper for S3, jumper for S5, jumper for S7, and one for S9. So here's the plan, and how is this going to be built? Well, let's take a look at that. So we search around online, and you can find something like this. This is what we need, and if you scroll down, Here's a schematic, it's only one transistor. It's a coal pit, you can see the capacitive divider, and there's a crystal. So it's gonna be a crystal oscillator. Here are the parts. Um, nothing really interesting to note except that I replaced 82 with 75. I replaced the 3904 with a 2222. And the crystal is gonna be a 7055 kilohertz crystal. So let's stick this all on the breadboard real quick, and we'll see if it works. There's R1, comes from power, so... Let's check the voltage, we're at... Okay, come on. <laughs> Let me jiggle it a little bit, it'll... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's weird. Um, it's like about 200 millivolts. And, you know, if you jiggle the wire, it changes, so... 200 millivolts. And... So we can't do this. 
Yeah, I mean, we're just about right. Just around there. Um, so there we go, that works. That's that, first time around. I mean, actually, let's see if we can't get away with replacing the uh, supply cap, the filtering cap, 103, and the output cap, which is a 102, uh, both with 104s, because I have a ton of 104s and I don't have much of 103s or 102s. So, um, come on, there we go. And here's 104s. So. And, you know, still. Alright, it's not too bad. And we get... We actually get a little bit more uh, voltage out of it because this output cap isn't doing stuff to it. Um, I mean, that's fine, right? Alright, let's see if we can't get this right the first time around. So... Alright, here we are, and I've just connected the power wire to the rest of the setup. And I have this clip on the ground, this whole thing is ground. And the output is being clipped right here. And that's coming from the capacitor, uh, the 104, uh, right there. And we're going to check our output voltage, and maybe we can figure out what we can do to get a uh, good S reading on our Kenwood. So, let us just flip this thing on, and then you can see that it works, and, you know, it's going to be different. Looks a little bit different, but it still works. And we're at 705. Uh, same as before, I didn't change the markers. So, yeah, everything looks pretty good. We're at roughly 250 millivolts, which is, you know, same as before. So, now that we know that, we can do maybe a little bit of calculations to get us close to where we need. And then, we can put some resistors on this thing. And it's time for our guesstimate. This was our original setup, and we intend to make this selectable. So, this is our situation right now where we've got... 250 millivolts in the output, we want 3 to 4 microvolts um, at the end of the resistor, and this is going to be into a 50 ohm uh, coax cable. So we do a little bit of math, and you know, it becomes roughly 4 mega ohms. Uh, let's see if that actually works out. Alright, I've got a stack of resistors labeled large, and it looks like our options to try to get that 4 meg ohms is going to be either 10 megs um, in parallel, or I could do 2.2 megs, uh, two of them in series. And you know that's probably going to do because I'm never going to use 2.2 megs. So let's take two of those on the breadboard. I just have this hooked up. So the wire coming from the bottom of the board is just plugged into row number 16 and row number 16 is well right here and I could do row number 16 across so now I know where that is and then come over here and that's our output so we could grab that with this and we could turn our power supply on and you can check out the scope do 50 ohms and you know it's it's a wiggle but it's almost not there I've got this soldered up with the jumper on it and I did mess up a little bit the first two are switched this is uh, by the way all these are in series and I'm just selecting at which point I'm kind of tapping off the chain so this is a bunch of different resistances except those two are switched or this is bigger than that one and I've got one here where, I don't know if you can see it, but instead of a 10 mega ohm, I put 
something else in there. I don't know what it is, but it's not much. So, oh well. And, on the back, um, I'm going to be touching one lead to there, and I'm going to go down the row, and you can see the resistances. So the first one is about 4. Point, you know, 4, 4 mega ohms, which should be. It's 2.2 .2 times 2. And the second one is, well, 2.2. .2. Next one is a 10 mega ohm, so it should be uh, 14. Right? And then we get 24, because that's another 10. And over here, this is where I messed up. So that might have been a couple hundred uh, K ohms or something, maybe. But that is still at 24 megs. And last pin here is 34 megs. So that's still a healthy number of uh, millions of ohms. And I'm going to finish this off by putting another row of pins here and putting a little uh, jumper thing on there. It is all built up. And right now it's, I have the minimum uh, resistance selected. And in a second, I'm going to turn this on, and you can watch the meter up there. So here we go. Right, I didn't connect anything yet. It's just picking it up from the air. And now on minimum resistance, it is S9 plus 20. And if I move it to maximum resistance, it is S9 plus 20. So, I mean, yeah. Close enough. <laughs> uh, it's giving me an S9, and we're picking up some extra something there. I checked the capacitance between uh, these two rows, between the output and this other row, and it's about five puffs, so it shouldn't do anything too much. And we're done. It looks like it's going to be S9 plus 20 on any of these settings. Um, maybe it's going to change a little bit when we take it and actually plug this directly in to our next stage but you know this is rather unscientific but it'll do the job there's the back for you and that's it for this video